Good morning. It is Thursday, January the 5th, 2023. And we are headed back to that carrier system. Um, she got her other quote. And she said the the other quote was uh, it was within a couple hundred dollars difference. That's it. She didn't say if it was more or less. But after speaking with her father and they did some talking and thinking, she has decided to repair the system rather than replace it. And I'm fine with that. And I just wanted to address this. I've seen some of the comments on the last video. You know, some of you keyboard cowboys out there, you guys don't have the balls to come out and say what you really mean. So you just, y'all type little, uh, little, little, uh, comments, you know, that, like I was trying to rip that woman off or something. Let me tell y'all something. I'm, I, that's something that I will not tolerate is being accused of ripping people off. I don't rip anybody off, okay? I give customers options. I don't push customers to do anything they don't want to do. In my opinion, the system was in pretty rough shape. And it is in rough shape. But it's not rough enough to where I won't fix it. And I told her that. I said I would I said I will fix the system. I had no problem. I have no problem going over here and fixing this unit. I just, in my professional opinion, it was a smarter move to replace the system and get her a warranty. But she's just not ready to do that. And I'm fine with that. I have no issue with that at all. So for all you keyboard cowboys that actually can't come out and say what you really want to say and you make your little smart remarks, either grow a set and say what you really need to say or don't say anything at all. Anyway, so we're headed to Johnstone to get a one of those rescue motors like we used a couple videos ago we're getting a rescue ez13 x13 replacement motor and we're going to service the system we're going to go through the system we're going to flush the drain we're going to you know check everything check the heat make sure it's working properly uh it is a little chilly today that's why i have the sweatshirt on uh Hopefully it warms up enough to where I can check refrigerant pressures by the time I get to that point. And we're going to wash the outdoor unit with just some water because it wasn't that dirty. We're going to check capacitors or capacitor outside, uh, contactor, you know, just go through the whole system. That's what she wants. And uh, that's what she wants to do right now. We're not going to change the outdoor fan motor. Even though it is a sealed motor, I'm gonna take the top off and I'm gonna spray like some PB blaster or something like down in, down in the shaft where it penetrates the motor to try to help lubricate those bearings a little bit. Uh, even though it is a sealed motor, I, you know, that might help a little bit, but she's gonna let the condenser fan motor ride until it dies. And, and again, it's not, it's not making noise or anything, so but it, there is a little slack in the shaft. So I'll, I'll go ahead and put some uh, oil down it and see if that'll help a little bit. And she said she'll replace it this summer if it dies. Um, so we'll take you guys along on this and uh, get this system back up and running. All right, we are back at our carrier air handler. We might put some fresh screws in this panel. All I brought up here was my drill because that's all I need to take it out. And then once we get outside, we'll need 
the rest of our tools. That shaft's got a lot of rust on it. And the blower wheel needs to be cleaned. All right, guys, we'll see y'all outside on the table. All right. Okay, guys, so this shaft is pretty rusty. I bought me some wheels. That's a lot better than sandpaper. I'm gonna highly recommend if you guys don't have one of these we these wheels, you can get them at Harbor Freight. That's where I got them. I got like a six or seven, eight pack for very cheap, and it has sanded that shaft so much better than a piece of sandpaper. Uh, I, go get some; it's worth it. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna bust the set screw loose. Okay. Now I'm going to spray some PB Blaster on it and see if I can get that shaft to move down. Looks like it did move down a little bit. Let me see if I can spin the shaft in the hub. Yes, I can. It's spinning very nice in the hub.
lug needs to go in the front. Okay, I'm just gonna put a mark where they have the old one. Let's see. This is the exact same one we did the other day. There we are. She moved down. There it is. Clean that blower wheel, it's dirty. But uh, no difference between ICP and carrier whatsoever. I try to always look at the legs and see about where they go. So there's two legs in between the plug. Okay. Makes a difference. I'm gonna go find some water and clean this wheel.
All right, guys. The motor wheel's nice and clean. Take it back to the table, set the new motor right, up. Guys, so we're using another 5632 Rescue EZ13 half to third horse. The old one is a third horsepower. That one covers half to third. I like that. The evergreens, they don't. You got to buy half, third, three quarter, and one. With this one, that's one less motor I have to stock. Um, I can stock one for half and third. Then I buy a three quarter. And I keep a, a one horsepower at the house or at the office on the shelf just in case. But you don't see those too often. But I do keep two. I keep this one and a third. Uh, a th I'm sorry, not a third. This one and a three-quarter horse. So let's start putting this thing together. And the evergreens are just so pricey compared to these. And they do the same thing. There's no programming involved. That It rotates on its own. Uh... This can be used for a gas furnace or an air handler. Here's the little uh, 115 volt. Here, I'll come show y'all. It comes ready for, two, for 230 volt. Well, if you pull this off and you install this plug right here that says 115 volt then it turns into 115 volt but we don't need that because this is a you know electric air handler but it programs itself when you install it and apply power to it and turn give it a signal it turns one way then it turns the other way and then it starts turning the right direction so it it knows it knows how to find the right direction on its own number one but number one wasn't doing it so i put on number two but number two's got a lot of power 
So that's why I was going really, really slow. Just barely pulling the trigger. Okay. So I'm gonna stop right there. It's, oh yeah, it's, it ain't going nowhere. That's it. It's ready to go. I just gotta clean up my stuff now and I'm not gonna make y'all watch that. Okay. We're going back in. With our motor. in on the bottom now we are back on okay Let's see, common is here, so. Plugs right in. Four is electric heat. Three is high. We're going to go on two. Two is medium. And just like that. We apply power. Nothing is happening, so that means the thermostat's not calling. So we'll put a jumper between red and G just to get the motor to spin in the right rotation and then we'll check this is a 10 kW heat strip
There we are. All right. It's spinning one way. It's stopping. Now it is spinning the other way. Because it, it's got to get its rotation. Spinning really slow. It is stopping. And now it is about to really ramp up and take off. Yep. Here it goes. Yep. She's ramping up. Y'all can hear that? Yep. She ramped up. So we're good to go. All right, we're gonna put the thermostat on heat. Make sure her heat is working. Huh? <laughs> yep. <coughs> and turn it up. Oh yeah, the door's coming out nice and clean. some of these stickers off but that's okay okay we're gonna need some spray adhesive too this insulation is coming off okay the heat is on right now it's just electric heat take an amp draw on I'm not I could undo that but I'll just hit each one let's see this is one line right here okay got 19 amps on that one so that one's in and then I see the other one right there 19 amps on that one, so all 10 kW is working. Let's take an amp draw on our blower motor. Do this uh, black common wire. Two point five. Okay, the insulation is coming off this door, so I gotta get some.
spray adhesive to glue that back. Good. falling off. Unbelievable. You know what? I might have to let this sit and cure for a little bit. here too.
it's holding now. Okay. spam risk okay I'm missing a screw This one is stripped out also. Yep, so we're gonna drill a new one. We're gonna try to do it with this one. If not, I got some fresh ones. We're gonna go right here. Gonna need a fresh screw though. All right, guys, so I pre drilled a hole with a zip screw right there on the side of that one, and I'm gonna put a in there look at that now we got tight one here tight one here tight one here and then they put a zip screw right there so <clears throat> the door is nice and tight it's running in the heat right now Okay, we're done up here. Now we're gonna move outside and check that unit. The only thing I gotta do is come back up here and flush the drain. And I will do that. Just a minute.
drain doesn't look too bad, but I'm gonna go ahead and flush it. All right. I'm gonna climb out this attic and I'll see you guys outside. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is fix this disconnect. And this whip, you can see it's come off the uh, off the uh, connector, but we just put it back. There we go. I honestly don't know if they put a screw in the top of this disconnect. I think they might have just put the two in the middle. Okay. And we'll put this back. Okay. Let's see if they... Uh... I don't think they put a screw in the in the top. They just letting that some bitch hang like that. <laughs> nope, they just got it screwed. Oh no, they did put a screw. It broke. No, that's that's to hold the uh the the guts so it's only got two screws in the center let me make sure they're tight Yep, that one was loose. That one's not grabbing anything, but this one was definitely loose. That's much tighter up against the wall now. I'm trying to go in sideways with it. There we go. Okay. Huh, now it's kind of crooked. Okay, that's the best I can get it. Okay, that's better. Yeah, that's a lot more snug. Gotta straighten out this condenser. The way they pipe that thing. Okay, that's a little better.
Check some capacitors, or capacitor. No bracket. 45.5. We'll put a bracket though. Let's get the meter. It's a Chinese capacitor? It is. Wow, 13 microfarads on Hermetic. Let me take all the wires off and verify that. And I want you guys to see that too. Herm to common. Yep. Look at that, 13 microfarads from common to herm on a 45.5. So that's, this thing's definitely gotta go. The fan side is putting out 4.7, but we gotta have a new capacitor and I've got brackets, so unbelievable. Okay. Let me check the ohms across this contactor coil. It does not look pitted too bad. It looks okay. So that's not going to be an issue. But we want to check the resistance across the contactor coil. I had one of <clears throat> I had a Bryant system. 16 ohms will work just fine. I had a Bryant system that I put in two years ago that I had to go do a service call on yesterday afternoon because it blew the fuse. On the air handler and it was my contactor coil was shorted out i had 0.2 ohms across the contactor coil on a two-year-old unit two-year-old bryant so we had to change that contactor yesterday so uh my gopro camera's going dead so i'm gonna go grab a capacitor a bracket and a gopro uh, battery so we can keep filming all right, guys, we have a fresh camera battery. We have a AMRAD. We have an AMRAD American made 45.5. And we have, oh, you know what? I'm gonna need the small bracket. That capacitor is not as fat as I thought it was. Yeah, definitely going to need the small bracket. I carry the ICP carrier uh, capacitor bracket so you can see factory authorized from carrier because they are the uh, see replacement components carrier corporation. They are the best capacitor straps out there. And see, he went from a skinny capacitor to a fat one and he didn't have a bracket so he just let it sit there but uh, I'm gonna go grab a small bracket because I carry the large and the small. I thought this was a fat capacitor, but it's not, it's a small one. So let me go get uh, a small strap. Okay, here's a small bracket. You see right here, the difference? Yeah, that fits it perfect. Might have to open it up a little bit, but that's okay.
put it right there where you can see the size. Okay, grab our drill. That is going dead. bottom here there we go and now we have a nice strapped capacitor yellows are our commons Blue is going to be our hermetic. Let's tighten that up. That was kind of loose. our fan okay that'll do her So we put a new capacitor with a new strap. Damn, you can't see the size. Let me see if I can loosen that up a little bit. There we go. My battery had just gave out on me. I'm gonna write the date on there as well. Today is the fifth. And I'll also put my initials. That kind of looks like a damn eight. But uh, let me see if I can fix that. Oh, one. There we go. Oh, one. 
0523. Five year warranty on that capacitor. Now we're gonna fire this bad boy up and take some amp draws on it. Make sure. I, I can't check Freon today. The weather had been in the 70s the past few days. Uh, but today is, is just too cold. I can't check her Freon. I'll have to stop by another day and check it. So, but I am gonna run the machine. Okay. All right, let's kick it on. You can barely see the data tag. The compressor calls for 12.8 amps and the fan motor calls for a 0.7. So here's our fan and here's our compressor. Kind of hard to get to because that zip tie's got everything so tight. Okay, there's our compressor at 5.6 amps and it calls for. 12, so we're definitely fine there. Hello? So we're uh, at 5.4 amps. We're well under what the compressor calls for. And the fan motor calls for 0.7. And we are at a, it calls for a 0.77 to be exact. We're at a 0 0.70. So that's okay. But if you, you can't, y'all ain't going to be able to see it. I mean, I'll try, but right here it calls for a 0.77, but this data tag is so wore off. Matter of fact, I'm going to write the modeling serial number down on the inside of this panel because by next year or by the end of this summer, you won't be able to see the model number anymore or the serial number. Model number is a CA13. NA030. NA030. Dash A. Serial number. Y'all see what I'm doing here? Two one one X. Seven four five seven five. Seven four five seven. Okay, the reason that I just did that is because that data tag is so baked by the end of next summer, you will not be able to see that data tag. So having that model and serial number on the inside of the panel can help me. It could help another tech, which I don't think she's gonna call anybody else but me, but she's not planning on selling the house either, but you never know. I mean, you know, uh, maybe she would and somebody else would take her. I mean, it could definitely help uh, the next person, even if that next person is me. So, I 
loosen that up. It's always good to do stuff like that. You want to, you always want to be able to see your your model and serial numbers of your equipment if you can help it. Now, sometimes you've never been to the house before. You get to the system, it's too late. There ain't nothing you can do about it. But if you can help it, anytime I see a data tag like that, I always write the model and serial number on the inside of the panel. That way, uh, you know, if when I come back, I have access to it. My drill battery is completely dead I got another one though and I need to charge that one okay. yeah the drill is kaput guys I think that's about it for this one I was gonna wash the coil but man it looks really clean I mean it's spotless there's not even a leaf in the bottom of this thing I mean this unit don't even have a damn leaf in the bottom so it's it's pretty clean and that coil is not dirty whatsoever so I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. I'll be back this spring to check Freon and stuff. I can rinse it off then. But for today, I'm going to leave it be. All right, guys. So we got this lady fixed up. We changed the uh, X13 blower motor, as you saw. We cleaned the, the cabinet doors. We re-glued the insulation on the back of the blower door and we re-drilled all the stripped out holes and put new screws. We changed out a dual run capacitor that was extremely weak and uh, checked amps and flushed the drain. I did go back up and flush the drain. I didn't have the camera with me, but I poured some coil cleaner down the drain just to help, you know, make, eat up anything that's in there. And uh, I couldn't check her free on. It's just, it's too cold, uh, too mild out. But she signed up on a maintenance. So I will go redo, I'll do her maintenance again this come in a couple months, you know, around March. And uh, check her free on when it warms up. And then she should be good to go for the cooling season. All right, guys. Thank you all for watching. And we'll see you all on the next one.